Yellowstone National Park has reported 1,000 plus earthquakes in a single month, and the officials have announced that a disaster is about to happen. There's no doubt that nature is beautiful, but at the same time, it is deadly. Erupting Yellowstone's supervolcano is one of the most feared catastrophes in recent times because of the unprecedented destruction it may cause. It appears to present one of the highest realistic chances of annihilating the vast majority of species on Earth, including the human race, but many people may be unaware of the hazards it poses. Seismograph stations at the University of Utah oversee the Yellowstone Seismic Network. All earthquakes in the Yellowstone area are reported to the public in real time thanks to this network's persistent vigilance. Yellowstone poses a double threat to visitors with both volcanic activity and large earthquakes being a real possibility. Officials from Yellowstone National Park have come forward and reported that over a thousand earthquakes had occurred in the area in the span of a month. Is this a sign of impending volcanic activity? Come with us as we learn more about the recent closure of Yellowstone and the alarming warning made by park officials about the increasing number of earthquakes in the area. Is an eruption forthcoming? People love Yellowstone for its beautiful scenery and unique geothermal features like Old Faithful and the Caldera Complex. Many people refer to the latter as a super volcano. But is Yellowstone on the verge of experiencing a volcanic eruption due to the high number of earthquakes that have been recorded? Rest assured, the answer is no. The USGS says that this level of earthquakes is not unusual and doesn't mean that magma is moving because no other signs were found. Earthquakes in Yellowstone are mostly caused by movement on faults that were already there. Increases in pore pressure caused by snowmelt can also make earthquakes happen more often. If magmatic activity was the cause of the earthquakes, we would expect to see other signs, like changes in the way the land is deforming or the amount of heat or gas being released. However, no such changes were found. The National Park Service says that between 700 and 3,000 earthquakes happen every year in the Yellowstone area. It is one of the most seismically active places in the United States. People in the park feel a number of earthquakes with magnitudes of three or four every year. The chances of another massive eruption. The USGS says that Yellowstone has had three very large volcanic eruptions that made calderas in the last 2.1 million years. During each cataclysmic event, a lot of magma blew up at the surface and went into the air as a mix of red-hot pumice, volcanic ash, and gas that moved in all directions as pyroclastic flows. According to information from the agency, the Yellowstone caldera system erupts about every 730,000 years, with the last one happening about 640,000 years ago. The last eruption made a Yellowstone caldera that is 56 kilometers wide and 80 kilometers long. The discharge caused pyroclastic flows, which left thick volcanic deposits called the Lava Creek Tuff. The Lava Creek Tuff makes up the north wall of the caldera. Huge amounts of volcanic ash shot into the air, and some of it can still be found in places like Iowa, Louisiana, and California, which are a long way from Yellowstone. The USGS says that if Yellowstone had another huge eruption, the effects would be felt all over the world. Large parts of the United States would be covered with thick layers of ash, and huge amounts of volcanic gases would be shot into the air. It would probably change the climate around the world and have huge effects on human activity, especially agricultural production, for a long time. Luckily, there are no signs that the Yellowstone volcanic system is going to erupt in this way. It is very unlikely that a big caldera-making eruption will happen in the next few thousand years, said the USGS. The Yellowstone supervolcano looks like a giant pot with a lid on top. It is so big that it can only be seen clearly from low Earth orbit. Its crater is 72 kilometers wide, and there are several tens of thousands of cubic kilometers of molten rock in the pipes underneath. According to the most recent estimate, it would take several hundred years for both sides of the Niagara Falls to fill up its shallow chamber, let alone its much larger and deeper reservoir. What would happen if a lot of this stuff suddenly came back to life in a terrible supervolcanic eruption? Who would live? Who would die? And would the United States of America stay alive? We talked to one of the most well-known volcanologists in the country to find out the most up-to-date information about what will happen to the world's most famous supervolcano. TikTok. 
At the moment, the two-step magma chamber is sleeping. Right now, a lot of Yellowstone's magma is starting to solidify, and a big eruption needs a lot of magma. Most of the area's life has been marked by large lava flows or, much more often, hydrothermal blasts. This means that any future eruption is much more likely to be similar to these. Even though these will be bad, they won't be the end of the world. In fact, these types of eruptions are very rare. At the moment, the odds of a supervolcanic paroxysm are about 1 in 730,000, which makes it less likely than a huge asteroid hitting the Earth. But a sudden injection of new magma from below, or a sudden weakening of the geological layers that surround it, as unlikely as that is, could cause a sudden depressurization event, and the whole system would violently erupt onto the surface and up into the atmosphere. We don't really know what will happen next, but Yellowstone's scary past gives us a hint. Let's think about the worst-case scenario. So let's say that a huge supervolcanic explosion causes all of the magma in its stomach to be released at once. On a cycle of 660,000 to 800,000 years, this has happened at Yellowstone three times. 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago. The most powerful eruption was the first one, which made about 2,500 times as much lava as Mount St. Helens did when it blew up in 1980. Even the most recent explosion sent out a huge column of ash that covered about 60% of the contiguous United States in thick layers. So let's say the first record-setting explosion happened again. What would happen to the U.S. and the rest of the world? Zero Hour it's not clear how much warning groups like the United States Geological Survey would get, but the ground around Yellowstone National Park would rise a bit right before the eruption. Hydrothermal systems like geysers and geothermal pools would quickly heat up to temperatures above boiling, and they would probably become even more acidic than they are now. A group of earthquakes moving toward a central point would be seen as a sign that magma is rising quickly through the crust. The roof rock would then fall, and the eruption would start. A huge column of ash and lava would shoot up about 25 kilometers in the air, or 16 miles. It would keep going for days by pumping ash into jet streams that would carry it around the stratosphere. It would get its energy from both explosive energy and heat released by cooling lava blebs and bombs. When the eruptive column fails, or parts of it fail, huge pyroclastic flows would rip through the park. These mixtures of ash, lava blobs, and superheated gas have temperatures above 1,000 degrees Celsius or 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit and can move at speeds of up to 482 kilometers per hour or 300 miles per hour. If they hit someone, they would die in a few seconds. Those who were close by would get burned because the air heats up to about 300 degrees Celsius or 570 degrees Fahrenheit. In general, pyroclastic flows move up to 15 kilometers or 9.3 miles from where they start, but they can theoretically go as far as 100 kilometers, or 62 miles. This is about the length of Yellowstone National Park, so if the vent opened right in the middle and the pyroclastic flows were especially strong, many people in the park would die, either from the pyroclastic flows or from the collapse of the caldera roof. Based on the 3.8 million people who go there every year, there are about 11,000 people there at any given time. There are a lot more people around in the summer, so an eruption then would be much worse. When the pyroclastic flows and ash deposits settle and cool, they may look harmless, but they're not. If it rains a lot after the eruption, especially on slopes, the water could mix with mud to make lahars, which are fast-moving cement-like slurries. There's a good chance you'll die if you get stuck in one. Shadowy Skies the most dangerous thing about the eruption, though, is the ash that is falling locally and around the world. If you breathe this in, it will cut your lungs and turn it into hard glass. It's also about six times denser than water, which means that as it builds up on rooftops, a lot of buildings would fall over from the weight. Roads and sewers would get clogged and break down. Water supplies would be ruined, and electrical grids would short out. Millions of homes might not be able to be lived in anymore. In this way, people who take shelter in Montana, Idaho, or Wyoming are most likely to get hurt. They could stay that way for up to a month, which is a good guess for how long the eruption would last in total. In just a few days, 
about 10 feet of ash would cover an area about 80 kilometers or 50 miles around the vent. Simulations have also shown that a super eruption could cover Salt Lake City and the area around it with a meter or 3.3 feet of ash. Other places like San Francisco, Los Angeles, Seattle, Minneapolis, and Chicago might get around 3 centimeters or 1.2 inches. A thin layer would reach Miami, New York, and Toronto within a few days. This would still be enough to break down cars and make water unsafe to drink. At least for a few weeks, flights would be stopped or rerouted away from the United States, and the National Guard and maybe even the military would be called in to help evacuate tens of millions of people from the affected area. It is very hard to guess how many people will die, but anyone in the area of the eruption, say within a few tens to maybe a few hundred kilometers, would be in danger. Goodbye, cruel world. This is bad enough as it is, but it will get worse. If the ash were put into the stratosphere, it would make the sky darker and cool temperatures in the area, if not all over the planet. If the eruption has a lot of sulfur, which blocks the sun well, temperatures would drop by several degrees, so much so that the next few years would not have a summer. The monsoons would move and happen at different times. For a while, the formation of tropical cycles would be much less predictable, and waterborne diseases could spread in very strange ways. Agriculture would also be hurt, which could have a big effect on how much food is available. The USGS is quick to point out that scientists do not yet have the ability to predict specific effects or how long they might last from such large eruptions. No matter what happens, though, it won't bring civilization to an end. Don't get me wrong, if Yellowstone had another full-on super eruption, it would be a terrible natural disaster that would cost both lives and ways of making a living. But it's hard to say enough that it's very unlikely to happen in the near future, if ever. If it did, it wouldn't be the end of the world either, but it would be one that makes the world a worse place. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about the potential consequences of a Yellowstone super eruption? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here, which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one. See you guys in the next one.